Hello ladies and gentlemen, I am Borderwise and welcome back to From the Depths, where we're building a nuclear submarine. Or rather, I have been building a nuclear submarine because this uh, episode, or let's build, is a little bit different from the usual. This is a post-commentary uh, rather than a live one. And the reason for that is that uh, I recently got an update to my Windows PC, uh, which reset some settings on Bandicam, so instead of recording my voice, it recorded the game audio twice, which is about the most useless thing uh, since a toaster that only toasts bread that's already toasted. So, um, I'm commenting over this again simply because like, I've finished uh, the nuclear submarine in question, I can't exactly undo time and, like, redo it again, so here we are. And I'm just gonna be commentating over my footage that I've already recorded, since that seems to be decently okay, and we can still have a good time, like, talking about the submarine. So, the first order of business here that I was doing is that we need to add, like, power systems, and since this is a nuclear submarine, um, I'm just pausing here because I forgot what RTG actually stands for. Um, like, RTGs are the closest thing to uh, nuclear reactors in From the Depths because it is a thing that is basically the decay of radioactive uh, materials to produce electrical power. And yeah, that's the closest thing. And also, RTG powered submarines, like, I could just kind of have a thing for them. Like, I actually quite like RTGs, probably way more than I should, simply because. It's one less thing to worry about if you have enough RTGs to produce enough power to make your craft do whatever it is you want it to do. You pretty much never have to worry about it again. Like, you don't need to refuel them, you don't need to make sure that they're full of materials and all that stuff. Uh, you just kind of go for it. And uh, right here, what I just did was uh, remove one of the blueprint spawners because, like, apparently you only really need one or only one is activated, I'm not sure. And, uh, yeah, here's the bit I was looking at the missiles, because I remember somebody told me I could fit more missiles in here, but I forgot what it was exactly they were saying that I could do, and so that was just me being totally forgetful. Sorry to whoever uh, told me that. And so you'll see, I look here, like, I just look at it like a big stupid lemon, and then I give up and just say, you know what, missiles, I love you the way you are, you're okay. And, uh... Did I mention this already? The only real difference I made uh, off-camera was adding a secondary torpedo propeller to the missiles just to help them get out of the water better, because this thing tends to... Well, without any form of a power system, it tends to sit on the bottom of the ocean, and the missiles have about, like, over 100 meters of water to get through before they hit the surface, so... Uh, that's what I'm... I think I'm showing off right there. Yep, there's the secondary torpedo propeller. It's a good thing I'm recording this right after doing the first recording, otherwise I'd never remember anything. So yeah, so it's basically just like not an awful lot left to do with the submarine. This whole build actually turned out to be a lot smaller than I was expecting, which is kind of like, it's a weird thing, like it's, uh, I, I don't know, it's like usually uh, when I'm just building something and not putting 100% brain power into it, it usually ends up being too big. Certainly most of my earlier designs had that definite problem of just, I wasn't sure what I was doing, and so I started with one thing, and then it just got really big and out of control. But this one is actually quite small, almost too small. It doesn't, apart from all the, like, uh, nuclear weapons it continually spawns in, like, it kind of doesn't feel like it has enough ducka, although it has plenty. It has... A fair amount of ducker, I would say. Although, like, I know a lot of people in the comments will be saying you can never have enough ducker. And you know what? You're kind of right. The only time you have too much ducker is when your ducker cannot keep up with your ducker. And so here's the bit where I see the AI and realize, oh dear, I actually don't, I haven't finished the AI compartment at all. So there's the wireless snooper, and there's the AI card slot. And submarines are kind of interesting in that. Like, aimpoint selection, well, anything that's armed primarily with missiles or spawns in suicide craft, you don't actually need aimpoint selection at all because the missiles and torpedoes are self-guided, and as you can probably have guessed from part one, uh, the nuclear weapons have a mind of their own, or rather they have no mind of their own and that's why they fly that way. So yeah, that's um, 
yeah, just this whole thing actually later. Like, I'm not sure if I should spoil what happens later, but I end up just filling most of the AI compartment just with material stores, and because I couldn't think of anything else to put in there. So, yeah, it's like uh, real inconsistent use of materials because the AI box is, um, well, the AI box is heavy armor wrapped in stone, which is a really good way to secure your uh, AI compartment because this thing is covered in metal. It is vulnerable to EMP. It's a good idea to do that. And here is where I'm putting some PIDs on here. So for those of you who say that I never use PIDs, uh, you are objectively wrong because I actually use them all the time. Particularly when I'm feeling lazy, it just I've, I haven't used the uh, complex control ACBs I used to in like a really, really long time. Like most of the things I've built uh, in uh, recent times, they all use these PIDs and because, well, it's like once you've got a winning PID set up, it's, it's just so easy. Like I've got this, these three general PIDs prefabbed and just they work on everything. Like I mean literally everything, like I have yet to see any kind of problem. Um, like, with them at all, really. Like, it's not the sexiest uh, PID settings, it's... What is it? Let's see if I can remember off the top of my head. Um, respectively, for P, I, and D, it's 0 0.5, 250, 0 0.5. So it's, like, it's real, like, kind of rough and ready PID work. Like, I do not have the kind of patience to sit down and fiddle with a PID until it's, like, 100% completely stable. So because, well, I just don't have the patience and I'm not that fussy. Like... Some people absolutely need their craft to be, like, 100%, like, absolutely stationary if it's not doing anything else. Uh, not me. I like my craft to wiggle around a little bit. Like, it just, I don't know, it feels more alive that way. That is, I think that's only me who thinks that, by the way. I've not met anyone else who shares that opinion. So... Yeah, so what I'm doing right now on screen is that uh, this thing is going to have a lot of batteries because it is going to be RTG powered. Uh, batteries are vulnerable to EMP, just like AI components are, so it's best to e uh, EMP proof them uh, as well, which is why I'm making like, um, well, I'm extending the stone compartment uh, here, and I'm actually removing some of the stone of the AI compartment, making it one continuous thing. Uh, two naughty pieces of two meter beam right there. That's honestly, yes, yeah, like, yeah, it's not actually going to be that much of an issue uh, with the upcoming armor update. Uh, just the kind of the penalty from using anything that isn't a four meter beam it will be lessened because beams will get less bonus health as opposed to like singular blocks. That's how it is at the moment over in uh, beta test anyway, so... Oh, I just realized that I used three uh, two-meter beams there. I could have just used uh, two three-meter beams. Gosh dang it. Oh well. So we've actually got... Uh, what we're doing here is we're gonna have two... Uh, like, engine compartments, so to speak. So it's two separate uh, boxes filled with uh, electric engine, uh, batteries, and RTGs. So, yeah, that's... Um, it's quite a handy thing. And here I just, like, there's no particular reason to wall this off. I was putting in the, uh, putting that extra layer of stone in there just to separate the compartments uh, completely and also to ensure, like, proper EMP proofing. And here is uh, the electric engines going down. I took, like, have I mentioned that I, like, have an inordinate love of RTGs? Like, it's silly, like... Like, I don't know, like, fuel engine, a proper fuel engine will beat an RTG any day of the week, because RTGs take, because they have such lousy power generation, they take a really, really long time uh, to pay for themselves, so, yeah, it's like, honestly, like, you're better off, like, most of the time, I would say, just having a decently efficient fuel engine and away you go. Uh, as for steam engines, I am not a fan of them, and, um... Over in beta test, like, I got some comments on the last video in beta test with me just going over the new Lightning Hoods Air Forces that uh, some people were disappointed that it wasn't as uh, scripted, as in-depth as I normally do, and I kind of, I see where they're coming from. Like, um, those videos, those uh, from the depths, from the devs videos, they're meant to, they're, they're informative. They're meant to, like, they're for the people who don't feel like reading the patch notes, which is uh, kind of awkward because... I encourage you to read the patch notes, because I never include absolutely everything, and I do miss things out, because I'm not perfect, I am a long way from perfect. Trust me, if I was perfect, 
I don't actually know what I'd look like or be like at all. I cannot imagine perfect me. I am not a Dragon Ball Z. I don't know what'll happen when I absorb all the androids and become perfect borderwise. I haven't even watched Dragon Ball Z. I've just watched the abridged series. Like, what do you want from me, guys? Where was I even going with this? So, so yeah, so uh, that's a lesson learned. So, like, from the devs is, like, I'll keep that scripted from now on. So, because just spawning in Newcraft and looking at them, like, I don't know, some is like, generally people seem to like that, but, I don't know, like, I guess it is a bit of a letdown when you're actually wanting, like, new information on things like, like the new steam engines, that's what we were getting at here, and, uh, yeah, speaking of engine power, you'll notice I've put four big props there and just dialed down their output to one. Um, it's more energy efficient, um, to use, uh, multiple, uh, sources of propulsion, and dial their output down, and it's more volume efficient just to jack up their um, power rate. And like, I find that out is like for this uh, particular craft, it's going to have lousy power generation because it is an RTG powered vessel. It's better to have a lot of props that are, I don't know, giving out less power each, uh, rather than a few props that have been like overclocked uh, to be kind of inefficient. That's just kind of how it goes, really. So yeah, so what was I talking about? So yeah, Steam. The new Steam, I don't understand, and I don't understand the old Steam either. So it's a that's one of the reasons I kind of was hesitant to uh, cover the Steam changes, is that I am an absolute luddite when it comes to Steam. I cannot wrap my head around it. I've tried uh, three separate times to record a tutorial, uh, just a really basic Steam tutorial. And I just ended up not even believing what I was saying. Just, I could feel the uncertainty, like, in my voice. Because, like, in front of the desk is one of those things is, like... And this is what, why, for those of you wondering why it can take me so damn long to get around to making certain tutorials, is that... I am not comfortable talking about a particular mechanic in front of the depths if I haven't spent some decent time on it and, like, understand it, like, to at very least a basic degree. And the problem with that is that um, this is a video game, and the split second you try and force yourself to understand something in it, it like it's immediately less engaging. And it's just the certain things, like breadboards, for instance. I have an absolute lack of info. Of, like I have z almost zero motivation to learn a breadboard because it's complicated. It's not for me. It's not intuitive because um, guess what? It's math. And I am, like, like, I am genuinely terrible at math. And, like, breadboard, like, for those of you who know coding, and I know there's a whole bunch of you, I've got a sneaking suspicion it can be quite uh, difficult for a coding person to understand just how foreign a concept uh, coding is to someone who does not code at all. Because, trust me, it is. Like, it's, uh... It's a very foreign concept to me. I cannot wrap my head around it. The breadboard might as well be written in ancient Martian hieroglyphs. And that's a bit of a segue. You'll notice what I'm doing now is... Uh, uh, bringing it back to what we're actually looking at. Is um, uh, where I'm just realizing that I'm putting roll uh, props on this thing. And it doesn't look very much like a submarine. Like it's got fat fins on it. And it's just, well, we're just rolling with it because that's uh, what we do. Adding rubber, just in case it uh, bumps and grinds against some underwater terrain. Uh, because why not? And, um... So yeah, like, I'm a huge fan of the new ducts. Like, I keep wanting to call them ducks, and if, I believe at this po very point in the original recording, I was uh, joking about how I love ducts, but ducks are terrible. So, uh, if, uh... If you want to know why I think ducks are terrible, just you just Google just the mating habits of ducks, and like you'll be fine. I'm like as I said in the original recording, uh, which is now forever lost. Uh, thank you, Windows 10, uh, you bastard. Um, that that was some fresh, juicy jokes that will now never see the light of day ever again, or ever. Uh, where was I going with this? Oh yeah, I'm not gonna actually uh, tell you why exactly, because I think YouTube will demonetize me. So that sucks. But yeah, it's to do with their mating habits. Uh, so yeah, duck, ducks are assholes, and there I just got demonetized anyway. 
I'm just joking. Like, uh, mild profanity, I think YouTube is fine with. So what am I doing now? So I'm finally messing with uh, the uh, AI, so the PID is already a way to go, all three of them. Uh, setting it up basically to be a submarine and act like a submarine. Deciding on the depth that, that this thing is going to hang out at, and I just say, you know what, screw it. Maximum depth, and like for some reason, like my brain, I took leave of my senses and decided to leave reverse on. But it's sometimes good to uh, try new things, or at the very least try things that you generally don't try that often, but believe me, just 99% of the time, just turn the reverse thing off, because, like... Craft, like, it's it's like someone who's on their, like, learner's license, and they're driving a truck. Uh, you do not fully trust them uh, with the reverse gear, because that's a terrible idea. And yeah, so, um, I also, like, uh, made a se slightly sexier looking uh, Azipod, just with a metal pole in there, so it didn't look like the propellers are floating or nothing. And yeah, that's, uh, that's cool and handy, and I'm just replacing all of them. And yeah, so like, like I don't know. I am I am not a believer in letting craft uh, go backwards unless they're specifically designed to go backwards. Give me a front sider any day of the week. So yeah, that's a thing. So yes, like I am I like these azipods. I, every time I look at them, I feel slightly guilty because uh, let's face it, they are slightly cheaty. Just because uh, the the thing that points forward is oh here we go. All right, so. Uh, so this is the point I realized that reverse is a stupid idea because the damn thing is like reversing towards the marauder like juicy buttocks first it's just no no man don't do that that's stupid don't do that and that's uh, when I decide that to reverse is a really stupid idea so as you can see the submarine is working quite well the nuke has been launched the Tuziatek and I apologize multiple times in the original recording to the Hungarians in the audience, uh, because that's totally not how you say firework in Hungarian, so I'm just going to say that the name is inspired by the Hungarian word for firework. It's not actually the Hungarian word for firework, because quite frankly, I couldn't have missed uh, the actual word harder if I'd tried, so... And this is the point in the video where I decide, like, you know what, those torpedo uh, propellers on the missiles are probably overkill, probably doesn't need them. And I think that's also the point I decide where, like, actually, we can go deeper. And yeah, that, that's exactly where it is, actually. So I go here, and I go, yeah, let's go minus 80. And so the submarine drops down. And so the uh, Tuziatic is just uh, in the water a little bit, bounces out. And yeah, so the end result of this thing, it doesn't look... It looks kind of like a submarine, but also kind of not. Like, I am currently on a real circle bender from the depths, which is why uh, the superstructure, or rather detection suite, on top of that thing... Um, it, it's so circular, like, um, it's like a... it's just a big circle. And, like, here is where we decide, okay, torpedo defense is a very good idea for submarines, so I'm uh, breaking out... Uh, the latest iteration of the Shark Popper uh, Torpedo Interceptor Turret, which is painted bright red simply because, like, there was a time I would kept painting the undersides of my ships red. At the moment, I'm not doing that. It's interesting how, like, uh, the, um, like, your personal preferences can change, like, just kind of out of nowhere and from the depths. Like, yeah, I remember just, I don't know, I look at the turret caps I do these days, like, uh, for those of you who are... Uh, for those of you who are interested... Uh, sorry for that grunt. I'm an old man and I just moved my chair. Um, what was I saying? Oh, yeah. So the circular things, I've finally gotten the hang of making, like, circular turrets. So the turret below the thing, no more diamond turrets for me. And I should probably do a video uh, on that, although I'm not 100% sure that I've got it right. So maybe not, but yeah. And this is the point where I... Uh, past border wise, we don't talk about past border. So this is future border wise talking. So the one who uh, past border wise uh, keeps telling to edit stuff. Well, I'm the one talking now, and uh, like past border wise did an okay job on this recording. Like um, I don't really feel like I need to really edit a huge amount of stuff in here, but uh, past Windows 10. 
and past Bandicam for um, uh, getting slapped around by the Windows 10 update. Uh, they're, they're very naughty. Very, very naughty. So someone is not getting uh, Christmas presents from Santa this year, and someone is also going to hell when I finally upgrade this machine. So yeah, so we've got a pretty much 100%... No, well, not quite. The video's not over yet. You might have guessed there's another 40 minutes to go. But yeah, so this is the point where I decide, you know what's a really good idea? Uh, combat testing my submarine against something that's like four times as um, as expensive and something that I found out the hard way has super cavitation shells and that is the reef sharks which I'm about to click on right to wait for it wait for it uh, okay no 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 apparently not apparently not uh, okay right so the, like make up your mind passport wise come on just click on... There we go. Alright, so... Uh, here's the bit where I kind of learn uh, that the Reef Shark is not a great test uh, for the submarine because uh, it either has super cavitation shells or just really fast shells that can uh, uh, hit targets that are hiding 80 meters below the water. That, On the one hand, like... It's understandable that APS shells can do that, because submarines are overpowered enough as it is. But with high... They're immune to most weapons, like lasers have a really hard time with them, cram cannons, forget it. Uh, missiles that are not torpedoes, like, not a chance in hell. And this is also the time uh, where I learned that um, just two torpedo poppers are not going to be enough. Uh, for this kind of thing, and there's nothing quite like learning the hard way. This is why combat testing is a very good idea. And like this is also where I learned that uh, the uh, Reef Shark has what appears to be uh, cluster missiles or cluster torpedoes. And that's also the point where I learned is like, oh damn it, the friggin' uh, roll props are connected to the main body basically by a single layer of rubber, which is absolutely no good at all. Rubber is incredibly fragile. This isn't, this isn't beta test. Uh, rubber is like, it's, it is, like, it's more fragile than wood is. So, yeah, and so here we have uh, the Tuziatek. And, uh, yeah, the submarine is pretty much dead. And we're just hanging around to see if that little nuke can actually uh, get close and do something. And the answer is no. It will not be able to. It is going to get, yep, there's, uh, there goes one that was uh, being built. And here is another that's successfully dodging all the flak, and boom. So... Um, at this point, I was feeling a little bit despondent about uh, my chances for glory. And so that's when I decide there's no kill like overkill, especially when it comes to defense. Like, you know what I said earlier? You can never have enough ducker. Uh, you can never have enough uh, missile countermeasures either, and we'll get to that in a moment. Uh, right now, we are uh, going to secure uh, the wings, for lack of a better word, of the submarine uh, onto, like onto this darn thing properly so they don't fall off so easily. Uh, that was an oversight. This is why, like, I would never have realized that had I not combat tested this thing, so... I get the sense, uh, often that, um, people don't combat test their designs as much as they should. Like... Yeah, it's like, it's a lot like, like, the R&D of, like, real-life militaries. It's just, you gotta trial the thing to hell and back to see if it's actually any good. And you gotta be cruel to be kind, like... I know, every so often it's like... I've gotten a lot better at it, actually, but... Uh, certainly back in the day, I hated to see my designs get hurt. Because it's like, you watch something you've put, like, blood, sweat, and tears into... It just getting... Ah, oh, that was dumb. You just, um... You just see that getting ruthlessly blown up by something that feels... Impossible to take on. That's why... Uh, things like the tier and the Hypatos, and I mean the old tier and the old Hypatos, uh, it seemed like they seemed like insurmountable obstacles uh, for me back in the day, simply because I was like, how? How do you do this? And of course the answer is you just, um, you practice, I forgot that there's an empty cavity in there, I should do something with that. And uh, later in the video I complain how there's no room left in the submarine, of course there's room, there's room in the butt, there's always room in the butt. Uh, when you've uh, got free time, remember there's always room in the butt. Okay, there goes, uh, there goes, like, 
the YouTube monetization yet again. So in any case, so this is uh, the point where I decide, you know what, is a really good idea. Well, no, I said that earlier, but the, here's where I'm acting on it, is you get a large decoy. So, I actually do not see very often, like, uh, missile decoys that are not large uh, decoys, simply because small ones are kind of useless, and medium ones are okay, but they're not great. But just a large decoy, a big, fat, uh, deceiving uh, decoy made using large missiles, it's absolutely beautiful. It, the signal strength uh, it gives off for both, well, for radar, for sonar, and, uh, like, for heat, for as in flares, is absolutely fantastic. And, like, your torpedo decoys are fantastic because all you need to stick on them is like a ballast tank and a sonar target simulator and away you go. Well almost away you go, like um, a little bit more combat testing happens uh, in a bit and I discover that um, no, nope, we're not quite done with that yet. But uh, the other thing that uh, happens is that um, I've got a second thing in my decorations, a tab and, uh, yeah, we're about to, I think we're about to go for it right now. Yep, and there it is. I recently discovered that if you don't actually want to put a, uh, whatchamacallit? If you don't want to actually put a hatch on top of a missile, uh, you can mimic a cram barrel over it and it still looks kind of good. Especially for large missiles. But, uh, yeah, so there's a bit of teething problems with that. And I know, I think you can use, uh, hatches... Uh, with uh, missile, like, countermeasure stuff. I was having real uh, trouble with that. I was having... I think back when I was making, doing a let's build of my uh, missile cruiser, the Xerxes, I was having... I was... Yeah, I was having real trouble with um, getting the freaking hatches to open since the missiles were fired uh, by ICBs because that was a bug in which cluster missiles weren't working with, AC with uh, local weapon controllers. And that was a whole thing, that was a whole problem. Excuse me, I need to put some water down my neck because um, I've basically been talking for about, oh, uh, I don't know, an hour and a half straight now, including swearing at my machine <laughs> when I realized that uh, the audio hadn't recorded right. So excuse me. Ah, water is delicious. Maybe I should do post-commentaries more often. Uh, let me know in the comments if you think post-commentaries are a good idea, because I might do that more often. I'm actually having more fun than I expected. Just talking to myself, talking to my the thing right here. Got Sony Vegas open, I'm just watching the video. And um, I guess this is why um, uh, the more... I don't want to say lazy... I, actually, no, let's say that. I guess this is why reaction videos became a thing, because making them is really easy. You watch a video, and that's it. And what is past me doing here? I think I think past me is talking. Unfortunately, I can't hear him. All right, so he's uh, his brain's kicked into gear, and he's remembered that saving is a good idea. Uh, what else is he doing? He's looking at the bum of the submarine. That is a nice bum. Yes, like, this is the point where I don't know what I was talking about. And he saves it again for some reason. Oh yeah, I think he's just like... Oh, now I can't remember of what I've said, like, in the lost audio and what I've said right now. I've talked about circles. Yeah, I talked about circles. And he's spawning in the reef shark again. Uh, the muggins. Seriously, like, if you're gonna combat... Well, oh, you know what? Actually, I take it I take it back, past Borderwise. Uh, you'll never... Actually, you will hear this, because you're me. But you're not a complete muggins for spawning in the Reef Shark, because when, um, when combat testing, like, it's a good idea to, like, test against something that's bigger and meaner than you. Because it's kind of real trial by fire kind of thing. It's like, it's not impressive if your craft can beat something that is, like half its cost, its material cost, is like, it's, no, no, that's not impressing anyone. If it can beat something that is twice its material cost, and, like, especially if it's, uh, the thing in question is not, uh, here's the bit where you see just how amazingly good, uh, those sonar decoys can be, although they're not perfect because, uh, yep, that's an issue. Uh, be most because those sonar decoys actually get stuck on the hull, and I didn't think about that. So, yeah, what was I talking about? 
So yeah, just basically the more hyper efficient your designs are, the better the results you'll get out of them, and I friggin' hate super cavitation shells, even though I was playing them before, and this is the moment when I realized, oh wow, nukes can surprise you. They're just um, vaporizing a turret, just for giggles. So yeah, like, I just stopped talking for a hot second. And this is... And this is the part where I realize, hey, watch the nukes, they might do something interesting. And they do indeed do interesting things. I think actually the uh, Reef Shark was a good choice, simply because it has so many damn torpedoes. So many torpedoes. And this is the part where I realize that, uh oh, um, these things are just floating at the exact same height that, <laughs> that my submarine is hanging out at. That's not a good thing. It's also the point where I realize that uh, the decoys are actually getting stuck, like on the hull, like right there. You see that thing is actually stuck on the hull, and we've got a whole bunch of uh, little cluster bomblets that are still ruining our life because um, that's the like the decoy didn't get away far enough. So yeah, that combat test is basically over. Saying okay, good, 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 and this is where I futz around a little bit with um, the decoys. And you've got to be careful with the ejectors on these things, because, um, final wounds, yeah, because I, I want these things to, I wanted these things to kind of hover just a little bit above uh, the uh, uh, the submarine itself. It's simply because what that does is that um, if all goes well, it kind of pulls torpedoes, like, over the submarine and past it, so they lose the target. And, yeah, so, the, like, that's the plan, and so I put uh, slightly too many ejectors on this thing, and I have inadvertently uh, made a flying, a flying, a flying, a flying uh, sonar decoy, which is kind of pointless. And here's where I realized, uh, come on now, we've got to not do that. And the wrong thing selected, gonna go back to the ACB, test it, and still kind of pops out of the water, not as badly. Uh, that's as good as we're gonna get, unfortunately. I do really like the appearance of, like, just the mimicked cram turret and uh, the... what do we call it? The missile? I just I just really like it. Maybe it's just because I really like cram cannons and just it's seeping into every... into, <laughs> into my sense of From the Depths aesthetics. But yeah. Yeah, I really like that. I was, um... I just... I can't live without mimics now. Mimics have done the impossible and made me actually interested in aesthetics in front of the devs because they make it so easy. Like normally with um, aesthetics you actually sacrifice a fair bit of efficiency. Or at least that's how I that's how I felt uh, back in the day before mimics were a thing. It's just like you had to shape everything yourself, you had to put a whole bunch of stuff that's delicate and like expensive in funny places and ruin the aerodynamics or hydrodynamics of your thing or even compromise the durability and it was a whole it was a whole thing it was a whole mess but now mimics make it really easy which means um, that uh, uh, some some people are kind of snooty about mimics actually saying like true aesthetics you do without mimics which is um, uh, kind of dumb I feel it's kind of like it's like the difference between, like, real-life art and, well, non-digital and digital art, let's say. Like, the end result is, like, digital art is far... I don't want to say easier, because it's not. Like, I've been watching a lot of Drawfee um, recently. It's great to watch, like, the way some people use my videos as kind of just background noise, which I'm actually quite flattered by. It's, a good, it's good to know that... Um, your videos is something that people can put on in the background and just kind of jam to while they do something else. Uh, the way some people uh, use my videos for that, I use Drawfee because I love that channel. In any case, they do, they are all amazing artists and they do amazing art, often under pressure, which is not easy. And um, it makes me regret not being an artist, actually, sometimes. But uh, yeah, what the hell was I talking about? Alright, so digital art versus like uh, non digital art. Like, the, in the end result, it's both art, and it both results in things that are, like, impressive and cool and artistic and stuff like that. But honestly, I don't think one is necessarily better than the other. And that same goes for, like, uh, mimic-based and non-mimic-based aesthetics. Because, frankly, like, mimics are just another tool in the aesthetics arsenal, so to speak. 
And I just... Well, here's a... Speaking of Arsenal and Arse, uh, here's a submarine battle about to happen. And I forget what I learn in this combat test. I think it's just to s test the new torpedo thingy. Torpedo thingy? Otherwise, like... It's bad enough your past self uh, does dumb things that you need to fix in post, but uh, when you're doing the, like, uh, after-the-fact commentary, try and get your words right. The torpedo decoys. So away we go, and uh, this is the point where I realized that, you know what's a really good idea? Um, putting a firing delay on those torpedoes so they don't get launched uselessly into the air. Also, that's one of the things I really, really, really hate about the new missiles is that they're way, way too uh, eager to glide. Which, uh, when you're trying to launch torpedoes from the air, makes it really, really annoying. Like, it's... honestly, they should not glide that much. They... that is physically weird. It's one of the things I really don't like about the new missile system. And I say new, it's been around for months. We've all gotten used to it, frankly. Well, I've almost all of us. I can't speak for everyone. I just speak for myself. I'm totally used to it. I barely remember what the old missiles are like. And this is also the point where I kind of realized, like, hang on a minute. The nukes um, don't work on submarines. That right there pisses me off so much. The fact that missiles occasionally bounce off the target for absolutely no reason. That is shockingly irritating. There's literally no reason that should happen. It just it should not happen. Like, I'm pretty sure it is registered as a bug, because if it's not, I will be a sad panda, uh, doing sad panda things, like eating bamboo and pooping 48 times a day. I'm not actually making that up. Like, giant pandas, they poop a lot. When you eat that much roughage, um, it's gotta come out, and it's gotta come out sooner rather than later. So, yeah, this is, uh... This is combat test, and so this is the point where, like, well, I've been saying that a lot. The Tuziatic is m made of wood, and uh, it actually lacks the propulsion to properly... Oh, I hated that. Like, that torpedo actually got stuck on that, and wasn't about to explode. That, um, really, t uh, that, uh, that, uh, d unamused me. I was about to say really ticked off, but it didn't. It was more like momentary, gosh darn it. Try and demonetize that, YouTube. Alright, so... I forget what happens next. I... I'm really looking forward to going to bed, to be perfectly honest. Like, I hope you're not bored by this post-commentary. Just because I'm a, I'm a tired panda. Actually, another fun fact I should learn to whip out at parties is just um, how much uh, pandas sleep. Oh yeah, so doing actually a reasonably clever thing with that ACB is now... Um, I switched it from uh, just uh, the setting of just there's an enemy within X distance to uh, target enemy uh, altitude between, uh, I think, what was it, like, m uh, I think I set it to minus 5 to 4,000. Uh, just because I don't want to spawn nukes if all enemies are underwater, that's kind of pointless. The Tuziatex, uh, they, they cannot hit things under the water, they're too buoyant. And no, I'm not going to make them out of lead, because then the damn things won't fly. So, actually, that is a point. Like, I could, um... I could tweak this thing, and, like, have it spawn nuclear torpedoes. That could be hilarious. Yeah. Yar, yar, yar. Yep, there, there, there I go. That's where I set the setting. Alright, so that's set nicely, and then I just spawn in the Typhoon because I'm a lazy boy. Or bother past me as a lazy boy. I'm probably still a lazy boy. I've had a lazy few days. Uh, the, uh, uh, what's the euphemism that I totally stole from Game Rump, sir? The Backstreet Boys reunion tour. Um, like, the, we're back in lockdown as of time of recording uh, here in uh, beautiful Auckland. Uh, because, um, like, we've got community transmission of uh, the Backstreet Boys uh, reunion, uh, reunion tour tickets. And uh, that's, a, that's a problem. That's a, that's a bad thing. We don't want that. We don't want that. And the government is being properly paranoid. And it's, um... Yeah, so uh, we down here in New Zealand were doing so well. And then, uh, like... 
apparently, like, enough people actually escaped quarantine, like, people who were being quarantined from coming from overseas, like, actually, that's not, I'm not entirely sure if that's true. It would be really irritating if that is true. Like, but yeah, we've, uh, we're back on lockdown and it sucks. But, uh, in uh, slightly better news, you're about to see a submarine get nuked. Like, right... Now. Actually, I think a missile hit that. That's, uh... That's fun, and cool, and awesome. So, yeah, it's like, um... I'm quite proud of this missile. Uh, this uh, nuclear submarine, actually. Uh, incidentally, uh, name suggestions are welcome. I'm still, like, even after seeing the recording, I am... Have, I have absolutely no idea what to call this thing. What kind of name should it get? Like... Probably some kind of deep sea, uh, no, not deep sea fish. Like, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't know. Like, it doesn't look like any kind of reptile thing. Although I think I seem to be straying from the whole reptile, amphibian, dinosaur uh, naming theme these days. So I honestly don't mind uh, other name suggestions. I kind of like, uh, and and right now there's the paint job. That is the fastest paint job I've ever done. It's just, you know what, let's not be fancy. This thing's going to be hiding underwater, like, uh, pretty much all the time. We'll just paint it black. And so it is black, and that's uh, that's how it looks. And I think this is the point of the video where I think, like, actually, you know what, like, uh, this thing is done. This thing is actually done. It's as finished as I actually want to make it. And the whole rest of the video is basically just fiddling around with it and combat tests. Uh, just to see what else can be done. Here I try an experiment to make the thing faster, uh, just by uh, overclocking the back propellers, and if you have a look at the energy rating, um, well, the energy storage, that's draining um, a little bit, because you want to break even if you've got an RTG-powered anything. So, yeah, that's a uh, bit of an ish. Bit of an ish. So this thing is about as fast as it can go, uh, short of jamming. Uh, more um, energy generation on it. Uh, probably could actually remove a lot of the batteries and replace them with our RTGs, to be perfectly honest with you. That could be a good idea. Uh, probably should do that off camera. Uh, the things that occur to you only after the video has uh, been recorded. So, yeah, this is. Uh, this is Ah, uh, yeah, so this is basically just going to be trolling uh, the Alcazar now. I love trolling the Alcazar. Not because, like, I remember being told ages ago that the Alcazar kind of has, uh... their anti-submarine cannons. So the, those 500mm guns on it uh, apparently are super cav. But, uh, I didn't really notice this time, because I think, um, maybe what happened is that we... Uh, zapped the sonar off it so it couldn't actually see us. Yeah, this is definitely the kind of submarine that's mostly for giggles, it's not a... I don't feel it's even a super meta submarine, to be perfectly honest. Like, it doesn't like lounge around on the ocean floor. It doesn't really, like, I don't know. It spawns nukes, but uh, nukes. I don't really think that uh, spawning suicide vehicles is overpowered. Now that I've done it, it doesn't feel overpowered because maybe it's just my terrible uh, nuke designs, but. Um, but yeah, it's like, it does feel overpowered because if you are prepared for it, like, they're not too bad to deal with. They are tremendously frustrating if you have not planned for them. That definitely goes without saying. Like, I remember just the first time I... I can't remember what it was. I think I was spawning in the Adrastos or the uh, Extinction or something. Like, spawning in, something like that. It just occurred to me that I haven't looked at the black current in a while. Apparently, that has really, really good nukes that it spawns in. And I haven't looked at it. I really should. Maybe I'd get better ideas. But, yeah, so, um, first time I was looking at nuke vehicles, I was thinking, how the hell is this fair? How do you deal with this? And the answer, in one word, is lasers. Because if you have a decent uh, two-axis laser... Uh, there's pretty much not a small nuke vehicle that can touch you. A bigger one uh, can probably touch you, but a bigger one is a lot easier to hit. So uh, these missiles are not the best thing for shooting at Honor Watchcraft because they're solid metal and alloy. And uh, just a wee bit of explosive damage isn't going to do it. And that's why this submarine is toting nukes. 
One of the great things also about nuke spawn is, and the fact that I've actually prefabbed uh, the setup that spawns in the Tuziatic, is that you can stick it on anything. I could potentially just stick this on the Star Slung and have her spawn nukes constantly, which will be really awesome and hilarious, I think. Maybe I should do that. Uh, it'll be um, kind of cool. What did that torpedo do? Did you see that? It kind of just snuck under the, uh, the thing. The Alcazar, and just disappeared. I also love how spawning suicide vehicles often distracts um, enemy fire. And the, the anti-air on the Alcazar, it's not bad, it's not great either, but uh, it cannot hit the Tuziatic to save its life, simply because the, well, the Tuziatic drives like a drunk crazy person. And that's why I love them. And then they explode, and it's fantastic. So yeah, I'm gonna have another sip of water, so bear with me for a hot second. Oh yum. Did I mention I had too much salt at lunch? I think I had way too much salt. Too much mayonnaise. Yeah, don't overdo the mayonnaise, people. Uh, cause, uh, it might not even taste like it, but I... There's usually a lot of salt in mayonnaise. There's a lot of salt in everything, actually. There's a lot of salt in the sea! There's a lot of salt on this submarine that we're looking at right now. Actually, though, does anyone know whether the seas on Nita are freshwater or saltwater? Because, like, that just occurred to me. Like, can you have freshwater oceans on a planet? Like, I imagine that would be kind of difficult because the reason why the Earth's oceans are salty, come bluey, <laughs> is, um... It's because of dissolved minerals. It's because um, water erodes uh, like rock and stone and just releases a whole bunch of minerals, among which are salt is salt. And like uh, salt gets washed down, I believe, in silt uh, from rivers as well. I'm not sure. Why are the seas salty? But just that, that's not a question I've pondered thoroughly, it seems. And there that AA thing managed to get... Uh, what? Tuziatic likes to rub its uh, butt on things and redeemed itself. But yeah, it's just sometimes you gotta wonder, like, why is the sea salty? But yeah, don't try and drink the sea, that's too much salt. Actually, it, considering how many things die and poop in the sea, you probably shouldn't drink it anyway. I once got a very upset tummy after swimming. Uh, at a beach, and I suspect it's because that particular beach is a little bit too close to a uh, sewer pipe. So, yeah. We, that's a problem in New Zealand, we don't treat our sewage well enough. And now you know. Uh, let's talk about From the Depths now. So, Kablooey, there's a torpedo. Yeah, it's just like there's not much uh, else to this video, really. Like, um, so, so how are you doing? Uh... Like, uh, would like, say in the comments if you like, uh, what's your favorite dessert? Uh, my favorite dessert would probably be... I don't really have one at the moment because I'm off the sugar. I'm off the sugar, darling. Oh, oh yeah, by the way, there's a tear. That's my favorite dessert, a dead tear. Unfortunately, this tear does not die. Which is unfortunate. That's my new way of saying unfortunate, but yeah, it's like... I eat way too much salt, and that's because I don't eat uh, much sugar these days, so it's kind of uh, taking one step back forward and then three steps backwards in terms of health. And this is the point where I find out that the tier either has uh, really fast shells that can hit things underwater, or also has super cavitation shells, which I am learning to despise when I'm building submarines. The tier, the new tier, like. Put bluntly, it's not nearly as scary as the old one, but it has pretty amazing missile defense. Yeah, this is the point where I'm like, uh-oh, railguns, railguns are bad. I actually don't remember, like, if this, in this point in the video, if there's repair bots on that submarine or not. I seem to have forgotten. Actually, no, there, there aren't. There aren't, I remember. Don't worry, I remember. And this is the point I... I believe in you, I believe in you, little guy. You can do it. Uh, you can't do it. Yeah, I spawned in the tier mainly just for giggles, because, um... It, the... One thing, another amazing thing is, is the uh, Sea Whiz on it. Those, uh, little... Uh, three secondary guns. 
Those are actually really good. Like, I'm impressed that they put out so much Ducker in just in such a small package. It is because they are rail guns and they have a ridiculously fast rate of fire, and they. Uh, oh yeah, that's the that, that hurt. I think that uh, shot uh, disabled the missiles on our submarine, and this is the point where I realized what happened exactly. Uh, absolutely nothing. The tier managed to shoot another Tuziatek. I'm getting better at saying that. Well, I'm not getting better at saying that because that's definitely not how you say uh, firework in Hungarian. But I'm getting better at saying the word that I kind of made up, really. That I seem to have coined now. And because Tuziatek just sounds... It actually sounds like, you know, a lost... The way I'm saying it sounds more like a lost Mesoamerican civilization than anything else. But it is the name of a nuclear weapon, so, um... Hey, that's almost like uh, the theme for one of the custom factions I have planned. Which I have not worked on at all. And... Oh yeah, by the way, the tier just got nuked, in case you missed it. I certainly uh, missed it just now. I was like, wait a minute, did that just happen? And it did just happen. Um, and that's uh, pretty critical damage done there. I reckon that uh, a pair of these submarines would not would be able to deal with a tier just fine. Because, like, it's surprisingly tough. I forget there's, like, there's multiple layers of metal on this thing. And the tier is missing, to be fair. I believe this is the point where... This is the point where stuff happens. There's another Tiziatic. And... Kablooey! It is very satisfying to, like, watch a nuclear submarine. Well, just anything spawning in, like, a nuclear suicide craft. It's just, I don't know, it's just there's something thrilling about it. And it's also very convenient that the missiles that the submarine fires acts as a distraction for the seawards. So the, um... Yeah, that is the downside, actually, of having uh, your close-in air defense, like, to pull double duty as, like, anti-missile defense, is that uh, missiles can distract it and let a suicide drone uh, get just close enough to ruin your life. So, yeah, that's fun. And this point, I am current, like, it, like, in the original recording, I was giggling because the tier is, uh, is kind of wasting its main guns trying to shoot at the Tiziatic, so uh, that's hilarious because um, that's not gonna happen. See, right here is gonna be like, oh dear. Well, you tried, little guy, you tried. So, yeah, it's like, uh, I'm saying so, yeah, so much. So, so, so. I actually have a bad habit of using the word so. Whenever I'm writing, because I do write a fair amount, I use the word so, like, a lot. Like, way too much. Like, I'll start so many sentences with the word so. S-O. It's like, uh, it's a habit, I guess. It's like I... It's like I say like when I talk. I say like way too much. And I believe I just missed... Uh, yep, I did it. Don't you love it when you're recording a video and showing off fun stuff in a video game and you're not looking at where the cool thing is gonna happen? Bravo, passport was Bra freaking vo. And uh, here is where I learned that, sadly, the missile uh, local weapon controller is deceased. And, um, yeah, so the tiers penetration depth uh, guns, uh, they hurt. They hurt your feelings quite a bit. So, yar. This is the point. I think it's like, yeah. Also, that's the same point I realized that uh, the submarine is out of materials. And, like, it's basically a draw. Well, not really a draw, because um, the tier can still very well kill uh, the submarine. Uh, but the submarine can't really kill the tier, simply because out of materials to make nukes, the missiles aren't firing, and the torpedoes are not going to get anywhere. So this is the point, I believe, where I think, alright, whatever space we have left, fill full of material storage. Just jam-pack it full. And I do have room for more RTGs in there. And repair bots. Like, repair bots, as I've said uh, before, always do them last. Because then you get an, a properly good idea 
of like how durable your craft actually is, like whether the active defenses are working, whether the armor is good, what falls off first, etc, etc. And uh, yeah, so repair bots always go on last. Or close to last at the very least. Never rely on them too much, no! Once again, I assure you, I'm not bored, I'm just tired. I'm going to go to bed early tonight because ye freaking gods, like... I think once this video is rendered, I'm just gonna fall over into bed and sleep. Because I have no excuse, like... It's the funny things, like, I don't have a regular day job, and that's actually the best way to get a proper sleeping side, because it makes you tired. Like, you're happy to go to bed uh, by the time, like, you get home from a 9-to-5 job. But I don't have one, so that sucks. Like, I have, the closest thing I have to regular work is now, is on a hold due to the, the you know, the Backstreet Boys reunion tour anyway, so... Don't ask me how I managed to make a living and eat food, because honestly, some there are times where I wonder. Ah, uh, boy. I should design t-shirts, though, for the channel. Uh, thinking out loud now. How long is this video? Like, I'm, like, I never fully appreciated just how freaking long my hour-long videos are. But I'm appreciating it now, because I'm having to do it twice. Once again, thank you Windows 10 for absolutely nothing. Bill Gates, I hope you step on a thumbtack. Actually, that's uh, that's a little bit mean. I hope that doesn't happen. I hope... I don't know. I hope everyone has a Merry Christmas. That's a nice thing to hope for, right? Just Merry Christmas for everyone except for the people who don't celebrate Christmas, in which case I just hope that you have a happy time. Happy, happy fun time. Like, I once heard that uh, it's kind of a tradition, I think in the United States, correct me if I'm wrong on this, for uh, Jewish families to go have uh, Chinese food, like, uh, at, on Christmas Eve, uh, because neither um, people who, like, uh, are like follow traditional Chinese folk religion or Jews celebrate Christmas, so they get to escape the, like, really pervasive Christmas spirit, which is, uh, I find hilarious. I kind of want to do that now. I just like, you know, make excuses on Christmas Eve, just go out and eat Chinese food. I've not had Chinese food in a long time. I miss it. I have a lot of, um, I have a lot of, uh, Chinese friends, like, and, uh, people, like, of uh, Chinese ancestry. And, uh, just, uh, due to the whole, uh, Backstreet Boys reunion tour thing, we haven't been hanging out with each other nearly as much. Uh, there's other reasons also as well, it's like, but, yeah, like, things like budget and, like, I don't know, I've got an injury so I can't do the usual uh, phys physical, uh, social, physical activity with them that I usually do, but, yeah, it's just we often go out and eat Chinese food and it's great bonding exercise. Oh yeah, by the way, I'm testing how well the submarine does against a lightning hoods craft. This is the megawatt by the looks of it. But yeah, like... And this is the point where I learned the Megawatt actually has pretty decent uh, torpedo defense. I have a crap ton of torpedoes, actually. And this is, um... Yeah, th this is mainly, again, this is for giggles, because I actually didn't expect the submarine to... Well, I didn't expect the submarine to die, because, frankly, lasers are absolutely terrible um, against anything that's under the water. But, uh, the Tusiatics probably would, like, they're not good against, well, suicide craft in general, especially nuclear suicide craft, they're not good against anything with lasers, because the lasers can zap them out of the sky, like, easy peasy. I think that actually gets shown right now. Yep, there we go. It's easy peasy, lemon squeezy. And, uh, submarine has only got a few scrapes. Because lasers suck underwater, and I believe, once again, uh, when the fun thing happens, uh, I don't see it. Though apparently, uh, we're winning. And this, I think this is the point where, okay, I'm not gonna spoil it, we're just gonna watch. Uh, yep, right there, that's what I learned that, um... Uh, just nukes approaching at funny angles uh, can still 
to completely cripple a laser toting grot. That's why you don't get too close to the nuclear submarine, uh, because that happens. So yeah, that's uh, that's a fun thing to note. So yeah, that's uh, I think yeah, this is the point where the outro is happening. So let's see if I can actually time this damn thing right. All right, so. Yeah, that's, that's basically the submarine. Once again, um, like, name suggestions are most welcome. Like, please share your ideas for the, a name for this thing. So, thank you all so much for watching. Uh, please like, comment, subscribe if you want to see more videos like this. Support me on Patreon if you like. It really helps. Thank you to all my current Patreon supporters, and I will see you next time in From the Depths, where hopefully we can uh, get my recording set up uh, working properly again. Farewell.